Anybody out there? Good afternoon. Welcome to part two of the Art of Motivation webinar series, The Energy Component with Sandy Adams. Sandy Adams is a two-time alumna from the University of Memphis with a Master of Arts in Teaching and a Bachelor's in International Relations. Sandy produces two podcasts, The Sandy Adams Show, where she teaches about business life and everything in between, and A Southern Girl's View with Sandy Adams that focuses on ordinary people with interesting lives and stories. Sandy's vast experience and 25 plus years of interactions with people from all walks of life and in all facets of the corporate world have demonstrated to her that the mindset and motivation are critical to a person's success. Sandy is an award-winning portrait photographer, social media brand strategist, writer, educator, historian, world traveler, and speaker. She recently relocated back to Memphis from Houston and is eager to get involved in the University of Memphis and the Memphis greater community once again. Welcome, Sandy Adams. Thank you so much. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the second of the four-part series on the art of motivation and job search. As Willie said, today is all about the energy component. So let's get started then. If you want to ask questions or comments, please look for the chat box feature. You can open that up. Uh, you can ask questions. I, I may, if the time allows, answer them while I'm doing the presentation, but I will definitely end a few minutes early so we can have questions at the end as well. If you have comments to make, absolutely use that chat box as well. First, I want to know, where are you watching us from today? So if you could just put that into the chat box, I'd love to know where you're watching us from today. The house, the house where? Like, like what's the city? Okay, Memphis, uh, Houston, Charleston, South Carolina, U of M campus, excellent. Olive Branch, Mississippi, right by the university, Houston, Memphis, Chattanooga. Memphis, campus in Memphis, from France. Hey, all right, I'm excited about that. Uh, Memphis as well. Bonnie, just talked to you. I'm looking forward to meeting you next week on Zoom. Great to have all of you here today. So let's, I always, New York City. Wow, we've got some people from all over. Great to have different people from different parts of the world in the conversation today. Okay, so let's get started. As Willie said, I'm a social media brand strategist. I'm a photographer, I'm a teacher, I'm a speaker, podcast host, traveler, and I'm here to teach you guys today about the art of motivation. So what will we learn today? We're gonna learn what is energy? Because you're gonna be a little bit surprised about what exactly energy is. And I'm really hyper right now, so I have a lot of energy because uh, I just taught a class this morning and then literally had to get off there and come here. Uh, we're gonna identify your energy drainers, like what drains your energy, and changing your focus, how to do that. Also, how to improve your energy leaks and how to maintain that energy as well. And we're gonna wrap it all up by talking about how all of this relates to job search or in life in general, so it can all be uh, intertwined. Here's a great quote that I think is very relevant for not only today's class, but any of the four classes that we're doing. You can't see the forest for the trees. So everything I'm gonna to cover today, when you get out of the class, you're gonna be like, well, that's all common sense. That's true. I'm not a psychiatrist. Um, Everything we're gonna talk about today is pretty much common sense, but the whole thing is a lot of times when we're in the situation, we cannot see what's happening. We cannot see the forest for the trees, literally. And what really will start the changes for you is when you can learn to see the issues because once you see the issues, then you can start to address the changes that you need to make. So even though all of this is common sense, when you're in a situation, it is not necessarily that easy. Um, okay, now let's talk about energy and what is it really? So it is the foundation for all of your activity, whether that's mental activity or physical activity. Energy is the basis for anything. 
It's everything, it affects everything in your whole life, whether it's mental or it's physical. The lack of it can affect your daily performances. It can also hurt your long-term career goals or even your short-term career goals or even your job. It can also affect your life. All of these things have drastic effects on every one of those. It can affect your health even. 80% of what drains our energy really are things that are external factors. So let's talk about some of those external factors. People's behavior. Other people's behavior can actually drain your energy. See what I'm saying? The other thing is decisions made by others can drain your energy because we're so focused on what those people are doing or those decisions made by others. We're so focused on those that they start draining our energy. Circumstantial limitations beyond your control. All those things can drain your energy. Our success really depends on us taking charge of the things we can control. So let's look at the hierarchy of motivation. Now, energy is going to be the first component of motivation. The energy is the basis for everything. From there, then you can address your needs, you can explore your talents, and then you can direct your purpose. But energy is going to be the main thing that controls everything. And that is why it's so important that you look at what drains your energy, how to maintain your energy, and how to get that and keep it on a regular basis. You know, last week, we uh, last month, we talked about mindset. So mindset is affected by energy, but you can't change your mindset unless you change your energy first. So ha what happens when en energy drainers are left unaddressed? What happens when all these things, you just keep building those up? Because you see, we only have so much in us. So if you have all these energy drainers and they're building up, you have a lack of initiative. Your creativity suffers. Your resourcefulness suffers because you're weighed down by all these other thoughts and all these other extenuating circumstances that are beyond your control. You become obsessed with those. Those take over your mind and they drain your energy. Blaming of others or outside circumstances for lack of progress. And we're gonna get into some examples of that in a few minutes. Performance problems or absenteeism. If you don't have that energy to go and do the best that you can do, then you're not going to be able to excel at your job. Or you're not going to be ex able to excel at, at life or whatever it is. It can also affect absenteeism, showing up for work, showing up for groups, showing up with friends. If you have no energy, and, and that's a mental thing as well as physical, then it's going to inhibit you from going any farther than that. The other thing, it can make you defensive. If we've got all this built up and we're tired and we're cranky and we're just at our wits end, then we can be very defensive. I know I've done that in the past. I've been so stressed out, so involved in everything that was affecting me that I've actually yelled at one of my friends. It was probably one of the, the most embarrassing things I've ever done. Very saddened. You have a defeatist attitude. And this plays a big role in job search. All of these can play a role in job search, but that defeatist attitude, like what's the point in even trying? That is a huge hindrance in job search. So you've got all these things going on. You only have so much that you can put up with. Now, this is a great little GIF. So unlike a car, a car has a fuel gauge. And you know when you're running low on gas, or most of the time you're going to know that. You have, but as humans, we don't have fuel gauges. We don't really realize that we're running out of steam, really running out of energy, running out of everything that we have in us to keep going. We don't realize that until sometimes we just crash, literally. We can start crying. We can snap at people. We can just give up. We don't have that gas gauge that's going to tell us, oh, we need to replenish ourselves. We need to cut out some things. We need to reevaluate what we're doing. We don't have that gauge. And like that quote, you can't see the forest for the trees 
a lot of times we don't realize how all these things are building up and building up and building up until we just are at a breaking point. So all of that can have detrimental effects. They can affect your cognitive abilities. They can also affect your general health. And there may be a point where you don't physically realize that. Years ago, I uh, had a business with my ex-husband. It was a huge business and we were under a tremendous amount of stress. More stress than I'd ever been in in my entire life. My hair started falling out because so much of what was being pushed on us, my energy was gone. I was just like one of those people trying to crawl up that mountain just stone by stone by stone, and my hair was falling out. That's what I'm talking about when sometimes you may be realizing that you're, you're stressed, that you're full and, and you don't have any more to give, but you're not quite sure how to get out of it. It's like being in one of those corn mazes. You know you're lost, but you just don't know how to find your way out of it. That's all energy related. It's zapping your energy, everything that's going on in your life. Now, some of you may have been like, what are you talking about today? I thought you were going to tell us about what's the best thing to do for food or exercise. And, and that's a small component of energy. But energy is everything you have going on in your life and what you focus on, how you see things, how you evaluate things, how decisions that you make and, and all of that, how that all comes together. So what is the impact? The impact on all of this, you're irritable. You don't sleep very well. It can cause more and more sleep problems, which affects your health. It can create feelings of overwhelm. I've, I've been there. I know what it feels like to feel like everything is just on you and you don't know how to get out of that. It can also leave you feelings of guilt like you can't do enough. This is one thing that women have probably more so than men is that have that feeling of guilt if they can't get everything accomplished. I read something the other day that said, you know, society, society thinks women should raise their kids to the best of their ability, but that they all should give just as much to work. And when women are working and raising kids, how are they gonna give 100% to either one of those? There has to be some give and take. And men are the same way. You have to figure out what fits in with your life and what's zapping your energy. You are left feeling dissatisfied. All of these things, you're unhappy with life. And then that can cause depression. It can cause more medical issues. All of this can snowball. And if you're in it, you don't necessarily realize that some of these things you have the power to control or to affect how they affect you. So let's look at energy drainers, tiger reference there. Um, these can be different for every person. There's not like one set of energy drainers that's the same thing for every person. But you don't necessarily know what drains your energy until you're aware, until you step back and look at your life, look at things that are going on, become more consciously aware of things. Hindsight is 2020, so it's easy to go back a year ago and say, oh, that's why I was so irritable. But when you're in it, as common sense as this all sounds, when you're in that situation, it's hard to identify what the problem is. So I'll give you a great example. I was a member of this organization I was a nonprofit in Houston, and I, I, was, I had a pretty high position in it. And I started doing it um, three years ago, four years ago. And I had to work with the main person, the director. In the beginning, she was really talkative, and she had a really great vibe about her, and I was getting energized just from talking to her. You know, those people can get energized from. But as time went on, I started to see the real her. But what I didn't realize was that her personality, 
She loved to gossip about people. She would talk really ugly about people. She always wanted to have phone calls where she was the one doing all the talking. And as time went on, I wasn't aware of how that was zapping my energy, not only to deal with the organization, but actually to deal with my day. I didn't realize it because it was a slow progression. And then one day, I, and I, start, I stopped taking her phone calls. Like I started avoiding her phone calls. I even started trying to say, I've only got 15 minutes to talk. And the more and the more, the, the more it went on, the more anxiety I felt about it. And then one day I realized, I saw an email, an email from her, and I got that sick feeling in the pit of my stomach. And I just felt like I just don't want to deal with this. And that's when I, a light bulb came on and I knew what I had to do. I had to get her out of my life. She was draining my energy, which was draining my motivation, which was actually changing the way I did stuff during the day and making me unhappy. But as it was happening in the beginning, slowly, you don't always see that. And when I made that change, I felt a whole lot better. So let's look at work-related drainers. I'm going to give you some examples of those. I can't sell because I don't have the right brochures. I know these weren't the, exactly the drainers you were looking for. I can't send the link to the customer because marketing hasn't created the copy. The guy in finance says we have to rework the budget. I'm going to miss the deadline because production just changed the specs. Our meetings are unproductive because no one arrives on time. This project is going to fail because the other departments aren't committed. No, I didn't get that done because I didn't hear back from the vendor. Now, all of those you're like, well, those are just like statements. They're not physical things, but they are. They are work-related drainers. Why are they work-related drainers? My star employee is frustrated with the constantly changing strategy. They're work-related because they all have a common theme. Can you figure out what that common theme is? They all lay blame on other people. Every one of those. They lay blame on other people. And then you become, your energy is focused on why can't that person do what they're supposed to do? Or why can't that department, I can't do my job because they're not doing their job. Now, some people may be like, okay, whatever, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna worry about that and go on with something else. But a lot of people don't, they become obsessed with that. 80%, typo there, 80% of what drains people's energy are actually have to do with other people. So research says that 80% of what drains your energy on the average has to do with other people. Now I realize not everybody can be like this. That's average, but 80% has to do with other people or circumstances that you cannot directly influence. So I want you to sit there and think about that for just a second. 80% of what drains your energy has to do with other people or circumstances you cannot directly influence. So if that's the case, what do you do about that? How do you change that? The first thing that happens is you feel powerless because you can't, you, they're, they're not giving you what you want. So let's go back and look at, let's go back and look at this. I can't sell because I don't have the right brochures. Well, I can't do my job because they're not giving me what I need to do my job. So then this feeling of overwhelm and powerless suddenly takes over and your brain suddenly becomes focused on that and it's zapping your mental energy there. But this is a feeling that, that a lot of people can feel in different aspects of their life. Now let's talk about this in relation to job search. I hear this quite a lot from, from various people that I, that I deal with and that I teach they don't see the point in sending an email because 
they can't, they feel powerless. I can't control who interviews me. I can't control, why won't they look at my resume? They, they won't respond back to me, so I can't do anything else. They won't answer my phone call, so I'm not getting anywhere. And the people just stop. They feel powerless. They don't feel like there's anything that they can do. And that their mind focuses on that, and it zaps your energy whether you realize that or not. So our challenge then is to shift your focus. So if you're like that person that says, I can't do my job because they don't have the right brochures, you need to shift your focus and figure out how you can do your job without the brochures. Because then you're shifting your focus to what you can control. And that's really what it comes down to. So how you do that is understanding your energy drainers. How they impact you. Now, this isn't going to, to suddenly happen overnight. If you're feeling overwhelmed, if you're feeling anxious, if all of those things are going on, look, start analyzing your day. Start looking at what part of the day makes you feel the least energized. Is it talking to people? Is it having to deal with a certain thing? Is it your mornings? Is it your afternoon? Is it your evenings? Is it a specific job or a specific task? Is it a specific subject? Is it a specific day of the week? Start looking at when you feel your lowest, when you feel the most anxious, when you have this feeling of overwhelm. And then start looking at everything around you. When I realized that this woman was sucking my energy out, I knew I had to make a change. And when I quit the organization that I dearly loved, I did not want to quit it. I did not want to resign, but I did. Because from my mental health, I needed to make that change. So when I made that change, I felt immediate relief. And if I had any doubt that what I was doing was correct, I would then notice when she would still send me emails out to, to take care of additional things that I needed to follow up on, I would get this sickness in the pit of my stomach. Not because I was scared of her, it wasn't. Not because I couldn't deal with her, I could deal with her. But it was zapping my energy. It was, I was forcing myself to do something I did not want to do. And so when I realized those feelings, I knew that what I was doing was the right decision. And then I could focus on the things that I enjoy. Now I understand we, we don't always have that luxury of doing things that we enjoy all the time. I know in life that there are times when we have to work at jobs we don't enjoy. As a photographer, I don't like shooting events. I dread them. It zaps my energy. But what I started realizing was I have to stop thinking about, I still have to do it if I want to make money. I'd still have to do them. Maybe I look at doing ones I'm more excited about or the event itself is more enjoyable. But the other thing I started realizing was Instead of looking at it as, I don't want to do that, thinking about, then I changed my perspective and thought, how can I do this in a way that gives me value? Because there are things in life you, you just have to do. You can't just say, I'm not going to do that because I don't enjoy that. So that's, you know, unless you are a millionaire, you don't always have that luxury. So how you look at something and how you tackle it then becomes in your control. So if it's something you don't like to do, try to figure out some things about it you do enjoy. I don't like event photography, but I get to meet some interesting people. I get to go to interesting events. 
So whereas I may not like the aspect of, sh of photographing people, because people don't like to have their picture taken for the most part, and I get people that put their hand up in my face, but if I don't focus on the fact that I don't like doing it, but I look at the reason I don't like doing it, and then I focus on what can be interesting about that. So I'm focusing on the things that I enjoy about that. So that, that's my dog. So that my energy is not drained from having to go and do the event or getting through the event. So now let's look at some examples. Fear. Fear is a great example. It can be an energy drainer. You're afraid of heights and you have to go to work in a, in a sky rise building. Maybe you have the fear of talking in public. I know a lot of people that are, that are terrified of posting anything on LinkedIn. They don't want to make a comment on anything. But once you identify that's your issue, instead of looking at it as a negative, look at it as how can I then in turn make this something that I can at least find enjoyment in? So if you don't like to talk to people in, in per, or you don't like to do public speaking, start off with what are some subjects that you're comfortable talking about? Change your perspective from, I don't want, I'm, I don't want to do that. Because people get nauseated by, by whatever their fear is. They can get nauseated by and get all apprehensive and it drains their mental ability, it drains their mental energy. They get all tied up into knots about having to do something. But if you focus on the things about it you can enjoy or you can take joy in it, then you're taking back some of that control and you're not focusing so much on what you don't like about it and what you're not fearful of. And it retains a little bit more. It doesn't take as much energy out of you. Because we can expand a lot of energy on just processing things that we don't like or we're fearful of. Another great one is not really believing in the path you've chosen. A great example of that can be kids starting college. They get halfway through college and they realize they're in electrical engineering and they hate electrical engineering. And then there's just all this, they're having to go through all these classes and they're trying to get through and there's no, there's no energy motivation to go and do it. But they have to get through it. Or they could just change their major. Or they could think about what is it, what can I do with electrical engineering that would be something I enjoy if you've gone so far. If you're in an industry where, if we're talking about job search, if you're in an industry that you don't enjoy, looking for a job in that industry can be physically draining, can be mentally draining. Not believing in the path you're going on. And I think so many times people forget to stop and just look around and say, am I going the direction that I want to go? If you're not excited about going and doing something, stop and think, what are my reasons for not wanting to do this? So first you have to recognize that you have these feelings. And then once you get, once, once you have that recognition, then, then look at what are the reasons that I am not wanting to do this? And when you talk about that chosen path or that goal you're going for, is that something you really want now? I see a lot of people uh, by the time they get to 40, 40 and 50, and because I, I teach a lot of people right now that are between 40 and 60 and they've had 20 year careers. And I get a lot of people that say, I don't know what I want to do now, but I don't want to do what I've been doing. Your goal that you had when you're out of college can change drastically in 10 years or 20 years. And the amount of energy that you put out that you get excited about, when you're, when you're looking for a job can, can be reduced if that's not what you know, if, if that's something you no longer want to do. It goes back to me in event photography. 
I can do it. I do it well, but I don't necessarily enjoy it. Thinking you're not good enough. This is a huge energy drainer. Now, this type of drainer, it also has some other reasons why. It, it's, a, it's a compilation of all kinds of things can come up with you not thinking you're good enough. You can have outside influences that create that feeling inside of you. You can have childhood issues that create that thing inside of you. But thinking you're not good enough, do you realize you can spend just as much energy thinking you're not good enough as you can thinking you are good enough? You exert the same amount of energy. But if when you're thinking you're not good enough, it's a negative energy. And when you then change the perspective around, you can think and think that you are good enough, your energy levels will change. You get excited about, sorry, my dog's looking. You get excited about what you're doing. So remember, if you utter something, well, I, I can't do that. I'm not good enough to do that. Or why would they pick me? I'm not good enough. I don't have what it takes. It's just as much energy to think that as it is to turn around and think I can do that. Or how can I do that? But the negative energy is what zaps your fuel out of your out of yourself. Not realizing it's a marathon, not a sprint. So many times when people start doing something, they think it's going to be a quick, a quick thing to do. Like job search. Job search is not a sprint. Unless you work at McDonald's or something where there's a ton of jobs available. Job search is never going to be a quick thing. And especially now with so much unemployment, it's going, you have to think about job search now as a marathon, not a sprint. There are going to be good days and there are going to be bad days. There are going to be days you make a lot of progress and there are going to be days you don't make a lot of progress. But what you have to remind yourself is, I need to make, I need to do something every day. Simone Biles, Houston gymnast, Olympic champion. She kept in mind that if she wanted to get to the Olympics, she wasn't suddenly going to do it. It was going to be a long, long process. And that's what she kept reminding herself. Because so many times when we start something and then we realize, oh, it's going to take a lot longer. Let's talk about painting a room, okay? I had a best friend. Well, she's still my best friend. She would get these big ideas about painting a room, and three days later, we're both exhausted, okay? I have no energy left whatsoever, no motivation to go back to her house and help her paint anything. Because in my mind, or in her mind, she was like, it's going to take us one day. It's going to take us just a few hours. A lot of times we underestimate how much time it's really going to take us. And then our motivation's gone because it really wasn't going to take us that long. It was going to take us a lot longer. And we no longer have that motivation to keep going. Sorry, duplicated a slide. Um, then let's, let's talk then about poor quality of nutrition and not eating enough. If you're not eating the right things or you're not eating enough food, those can literally drain your energy. I did not realize this was happening to me until about three years ago. Three years ago, I really started wanting to have a routine in the morning. I really wanted, I realized because my mom had um, heart disease, but she also had a history of diabetes in our family. And as a, as, a, as a young person, I also had low blood sugar. So I, I knew that I would have to eat little meals throughout the day. But about three years ago, I realized that I was tired of eating late at night 
because the majority of my meals were late at night, like eight and nine and 10 o'clock at night, which is horrible for you. And I would feel sluggish the next morning. And what I did was I turned my day around. I decided my biggest meal or one of my bigger meals was going to be in the morning. And I also realized that eating cereal, no matter how healthy that cereal is, was not going to keep me energized for many hours. It may taste good, but it wasn't going to give me the energy literally to get through the rest of the day. I was teaching classes from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m., and then I would have a team meeting. So I really wasn't getting a chance to eat until 2 or 3 in the afternoon. So what I started doing was I got up, I love coffee. I started using a coffee called um, Bulletproof. This is, not for, this is not for people who have heart disease. It's not more caffeine. It's got really good nutrients in it and good healthy fats that keep your body fueled. So I wasn't getting this big caffeine rush. It just had things in it, special good healthy fats in it that was sustaining my energy for several hours. And I also decided to start eating a healthy breakfast, egg whites, turkey bacon. Then I started noticing, not at first, I actually had coworkers who then noticed, Sandy, you don't say you're hungry anymore. I was like, really, I don't? I started enjoying this routine, which we're gonna talk about too, routines. I started enjoying the routine of making the coffee in a French press, having my breakfast, and I realized my energy level was leveling out for the entire day. I had students that started commenting on how much I had energy I had in the morning. And even the days when I didn't drink the coffee, my energy level was still high. It was still maintained. And what I realized then, after several months of doing this and somebody noticing that, was that I was feeling better. I was no longer getting high energy early in the morning and then getting that low feeling after lunch. You know what I'm talking about. Even if I, even for people that eat at lunch, if they eat the wrong things, it saps their energy for the mid afternoon. But what I saw was by focusing on starting my day in a good, healthy way, my energy level was then sustained for the rest of the day so I could actually be more productive. I was motivated over the course of that day to do the things that I needed to do. And since those three, like over the course of the three years, I've now realized more than ever that my energy level is always pretty much, I mean, I, I do have an occasional day where I get up in the morning and I'm just like drained because I didn't get enough sleep. But for the most part, my energy stays level and at a high enough level that I'm motivated to get things done. Now, let's go back and talk about that poor quality of sleep and not sleeping enough. I know we're in one of those societies and that time period where we want to have so much to do, there's not enough time to do it, and we don't get enough sleep. And it's a repetitive cycle. You go, to, you go to bed late tonight, you get up in the morning, you maybe oversleep, you don't feel, you feel groggy, you're, you're not motivated to do anything, you put stuff off. It's a snowball effect. And by the weekend, you're like, oh my gosh, I don't want to get out of bed today, I want to sleep until noon, I need to repre refresh myself. And then Monday morning, it starts the same snowball effect all over again. You're not motivated to get stuff done because in your head, you, you're, you're tired, you're irritable. You suddenly don't want to do stuff, so you put them off, and then you wait till the last moment to do them, and then you're rushed, and you, then you feel overwhelmed, and you have all this anxiety in you. You have to stop that cycle. You have to stop it. You can't, keep, I call it a hamster wheel. You can't stay on that hamster wheel. You have to stop the cycle. So tonight, go to bed at 10 o'clock, or go to bed at 11 o'clock. You need to have at least six hours of sleep. Now, doing it one night is not the answer. You need to start doing it. 
I will be the first to tell you that that's the one thing that I have a hard time doing is getting enough sleep every night. I have started having those floaters in my eyes, those little black floaters. The other thing that I did research on that is that can be exa uh, exaggerated by, by lack of sleep. So that is something I'm really now aware of, that it's a, it could affect my health, not just my eyes, but my overall health. So I'm really trying to make an effort to get enough sleep. So then again, I wake up motivated to do the tasks that I need to do. Working too much, that burns us out. I do love my work, but sometimes I get a little obsessed about it. And then if I do that one thing and I'm obsessed about getting this done, perfection, okay? If I'm obsessed about getting this done and then my energy is drained and I'm not motivated to do that thing again anytime soon because I've suddenly worked so much on it that I'm tired of it. See, planning out your day, planning out your week and your month so that you have time slotted for all the things that need to get done then relaxes your mind and allows your energy to be motivated to do those things that you need to do. Negative people, I've talked about that throughout this, this, this hour. Negative people can zap your energy, your mental energy, and you don't even realize that at first. But when you start, start looking at your day-to-day -day life, start looking at the week, start looking at when you feel the least energized, or what you're talking about. People don't even realize how pe other people's actions can affect them, but if they're talking about it all the time, that can also zap your energy. If you're talking about other people all the time, it can zap your energy. If you're complaining about a coworker because they're not doing their job, have you stopped to realize how much energy you're putting out to complain about them because you're frustrated because they're not doing your job? It's suddenly affecting you. They don't care, it's not affecting them. So how does all this play a role in job search? Creating good habits. Take at least one action that will move you to your goal. One action every day. Think about it as one step in front of the other. Every day, get up and decide you're gonna do at least one action. Don't give yourself a list of 20 actions. At least one action, but take some action every day. Because that, that one action actually fuels your energy a little bit. Plan your day the night before. Don't get up in the morning and go, what am I going to do today? I don't know. Planning your day even the night before or on Sunday gives you motivation when you get up in the morning. You already know what you're going to do. It energizes you a little bit because you don't have to worry about that anymore. You've got your plan laid out. Visualize what your perfect day would be. You may not have a perfect day, but visualizing what would your perfect day look like? We as adults so many times forget to dream. We forget about thinking about things that we would like to have. How would we like our life to look? You've got to have something to look forward to, something that says, this is what I want to design my day by. Reflecting on your day. At the end of the day, what were your wins? What were your losses? What could you have done better? Were you productive? How much did you accomplish? What's one win that you did today? That, all of that actually energizes you to get up the next day. Networking. Networking with industry peers and non-industry peers. Willie and I were just talking before class started about how we met. And how it turned out because I'm here today because of how I met Willie. Networking, meeting new people can energize you in a way you never realized. And there's a fly in my face. Do most important work during your peak performance hours. I don't always do that, but look at when you feel the best during the day. If you have to write a lot, when are you most creatively writing? 
The other thing is don't, don't check your email all day long. But look at when you're most productive and do the hardest task then. Or do the task that takes the most energy then. And have a schedule. Start time, end times for the day. That's never been more important than during this pandemic and working from home and quarantine. It was something I'd already instituted because I've been working from home for years for the most part. So that was something I was already used to, but having a start time, knowing when you're going to start work, even if you're in job search, it's still a job, knowing when you're going to start work and then having an end time at five o'clock, I'm going to stop this and then I'm going to do my real life. This job is over at 5 PM. I'm going to, clock out and I'm going to start my regular life, my personal life. Those all will help energy levels increase. Morning routine, as I said, morning routines are really, really critical. Organizing your space so that you can work without stressing. And that's one thing I'm still trying to work on. I have a tendency to stack things up and then not know where the papers are. Organizing your space so that you can easily find what you need to find will actually make your energy levels go up because you won't spend all that frustration and all of your energy on trying to find what you can't find. Taking breaks. Getting up from your desk, changing where you work. I know I'm very lucky. There are days when I can actually go on the front porch, take my laptop, and I can work on the front porch. But taking breaks, working in 30-minute increments, 50 increments, 50-minute increments, or even an hour and a half increments, whatever works best for you, but getting up and taking a break. And I don't mean an hour break. I mean like a five-minute break. Always taking lunch and not at your desk no matter if you're working from home or wherever, or even in job search, you need to take those breaks. Write down your goals. Look at them every day. Remind yourself what your goals are. Because again, you might need to reassess them. Writing stuff down, putting it up where you can see it, constantly reminds you of what your goal is. Track your progress. There's nothing worse than trying, doing something, and your motivation goes away, your energy level is not as great because you don't really know where you are in your progress. You know, when I was in, in school, when I was little, we only had one graduation, that was high school. And now they got a graduation for pre-K, for kindergarten, for first grade, second grade, from half, five and a half grade. They have a graduation for everything because it's tracking your progress. Okay, they're motivating kids, giving them the energy to say, hey, you accomplished this, now look, okay? It's also rewarding them, but it's tracking progress. So like if you're on a weight plan, write your, your daily things down that you're doing. Look at what your progress is. Job search, keep a plan of what you've done every day. Keep a plan of who you've contacted, when they responded to you. Look so you can see how many emails you've sent out, how many connection requests you've sent out. Track your progress. That keeps your energy levels motivated when you can see what you've done and what you have left to do. Make sure you have attainable goals, not goals that are so overwhelming like, I want to I wanna climb Mount, Mount Rainier. I want to climb that. And you've never climbed a mountain in your life, let alone a small hill. Start out with small goals so they're attainable, so that your energy level stays up and you're not like, oh my God, I'm never going to get this done. Reward yourself. Even if it's ice cream, even if it's, okay, I did that, so I'm going to go spend the afternoon. Whatever it is, but have little rewards for yourself. That keeps your energy level up. So here is a great book because habits, re, re, um, reprogramming your habits really is good at 
setting yourself up for having good energy. A great example of that is me setting up my morning routine so that my energy level throughout the day literally was going to be level. This book, Atomic Habits, it really talks about how you can understand what the, um, what's what I'm looking for, instigators or the triggers, what the triggers are to your bad habits so that you can reprogram those, can reprogram yourself with good habits. So for me, my trigger is really that coffee in the morning because I use chocolate caramel creamer in it. That's my indulgence for the day. So my trigger is the coffee. The coffee is what starts my morning in the French press. It's a very simple thing. And for me, it just gives me great joy. I don't know why, but you know what? It makes me happy and it energizes me. Mentally, it energizes me and physically. So that's my trigger. So now I've taken a trigger and I've created a good habit. So this book talks about triggers and how you can figure out what your triggers are for your bad habits and create triggers for good habits. Okay, recap, engage your own powers to come up with new options for taking back your energy that situations in life demand. You have the power to do that. Look at how you can engage your own power to change those things that are draining your energy. Shift your focus from what you can, shift your focus to what you can influence instead of what you can't influence. You cannot control how somebody else does their job. You can control how you do your job. You cannot control if somebody responds to an email when you've reached out to them about a job. You can control how many people you email. That is something you can do. Identify your energy drainers. Start looking at your day-to-day. -day. Keep a journal, even if it's for seven days. When do you feel happy? When do you feel sad? When do you feel scared? When are you anxious? When are you exhausted? When are you getting up in the morning? When are you going to bed at night? Do that for seven days. And then go back and read your, your journal and see if you can pinpoint the patterns. Because once you start looking for those trees, you can see them. You'll start seeing them and you can start identifying how you can change those. You have to believe in yourself. That's the secret. You have the power to change all of your energy things. You have the power to create more energy within you that will sustain your motivation. Because without energy, the rest of your motivating factors are not going to get there. They're all dependent on your energy level, your energy throughout the day, throughout the week in life, your energy mentally and physically is what is the basis for your motivation. Okay. If you want to find my podcast, you can find me at the Sandy Adams show or Southern Girls View with Sandy Adams. And my first season three episode was with a previous Memphis State instructor. Uh, it's just out, Dr. George Kia, and I'd love for you to go and listen to his story. It's an amazing story. He taught at University, well, he taught at Memphis State uh, from 1988 to 1990. You can find me wherever you listen to podcasts. If you want to connect, I'd love for you to connect with me online. You can connect with me on Instagram uh, at these three. Um, I have three accounts there. You can also connect with me on Facebook, LinkedIn, Sandy Adams Dash Studio. I'd love to be uh, connected with you guys out there. Uh, and also on YouTube, as well as my websites. And then... We'd love for you to connect with Willie Clark, who is our Memphis Alumni Career Center Services Manager, and also connect with the University of Memphis on LinkedIn as well, as well as the other social media sites. Uh, we would love for you to do that. That's a picture of my dog, Lucy, who's the one you hear snoring right now. The Art of Motivation and Job Search. The next two webinars, the last two would be uh, Thursday, November 12th, What Role Direction Plays in Motivation. And then on the 10th will be Persistence is Key. As I said, they are all webinars from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. Central Standard Time, and registration is now open. Veronica says, thank you for the reminders of energy drainers. I'm also guilty of the perfectionist desire, which is something I realize to be energy zapper, along with surrounding self with negative speaking individuals didn't realize lack of rest called black floaters in eyes. I didn't either. Um, so 
if there's anything that's going to prompt me to get a little bit more sleep, it's the little floaters in my eyes. So again, I'm looking, you know, what's that motivation to get you to do what you're supposed to do? So that's going to motivate me to try to get more sleep. So does anybody have any other questions? Anything out there? Margot says, I'm at the house dog sitting in Midtown Memphis. I just now saw that. Okay, does anybody else have any other questions, comments you want to make, stories you want to share? Anything? Are y'all all shy today? I'm starting to say y'all more now. Oh, Diane, Diane says we're all muted, but you can type it into the uh, chat box. Brandon says, thank you, go Tigers. Yes, Karen, great presentation. You're absolutely welcome. I was afraid I was going to be too hyper today because I taught right ahead, uh, just ahead of this. Lauren says, very nice, very clear. You're quite welcome. Maybe you guys, uh, does anybody want to share what they found the most enlightening from today's presentation? Manuel says, thank you so much. I love to have been taking steps to get into a healthy routine. Diana says, we'll, we'll be able to view this after so that we can go back over some of the slides. Uh, I don't know about that. Willie will have to answer that, but I'm sure in the next few weeks, uh, you will be able to watch this again. And if you connect with me on LinkedIn, I'd be happy to answer any questions or if you want to, if you uh, need some suggestions for things or uh, anything like that. So yeah, if you have questions or comments, please put those into the chat box. Uh, Margus is doing at least one thing every day instead of trying to do it all at once. Last minute is something that was helpful to hear. Absolutely. Yes, Tom, look at that book, Atomic Habits. It's really, really good. It just changes the way you think about things. Veronica, maintaining daily motivation is key. It really is. Kevin says, when you said, how can I do this to give me value? I want to use the change of perspective for the rest of the semester. Yes, yes, Kevin. Yes. How can I do this that gives me value? And Alfreda says negative energy feeds off negative energy. It does. And that's one thing I actually learned that back in college was that negative people put out a lot of energy that can, they can zap you and you don't even realize it. Um, and that's why I was so surprised last year when I realized I had not been aware of how this person was zapping my energy when I routinely used to clear out my friends list a long time ago, starting in college, I'd get rid of people that just, you know, were negative, hateful all the time. And so I was really surprised from, um, that I'd let this person take over my mental, my mental energy, uh, without realizing. And so, yes, all this stuff is common sense, but not when you're in the middle of it. So from self to self, stop it. That's right. That's right. Brandon says, stay safe, back to work, steps from knowing to doing is rarely taken, let's take. Absolutely. I challenge all of y'all to just start doing one, one thing a day, one thing a week. Pick out something, but, but you can really start by analyzing your day and analyzing your week. And when you sit down and you think about, why do I not want to do this? Or, or why do I feel bad after doing this one thing? Start looking at that and then um, really think about... Um, how that's affecting you. That's really the first step is to, to be able to start identifying and then figuring out what the issue is. Uh, Manuel says, would you recommend having a life coach? Um, yes, I mean, you can definitely do that. That's a great suggestion. The thing is, um, take a moment to write down, because they're probably gonna ask you to do the same thing. So start writing down and start assessing you. You may then realize you don't need a life coach, but you can definitely start doing that. Some people um, some people need outside, maybe, maybe they don't necessarily, because um, sometimes you feel overwhelmed, and so you, you, you need that extra support to help you process things. And so absolutely you can do that. Uh, Julie says, people project their negativity all the time. I'm working on being more purposeful. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, guys. Uh, that's it. If you don't have any other questions or comments, thank you so much. I hope to see you guys on November 12th with What Role Direction Plays. 
uh, in motivation, specifically in job search, but also in life, because I'm always going to be talking about both of those, either combined together or separately. Um, so thank you so much, guys, for attending today. I most appreciate it. Have a great rest of the day. Go Tigers. Um, I'll see you guys later. Thank you.